to you. Quick question here. How come then when we see in some parts of the world people starve to death? Why is it the case? Or why do we even have poor people? Why couldn't God just give everybody an equal amount of money? See why this, the overall system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to deliver to you your sustenance. But because life is a test and Allah is testing us, Sometimes Allah allows us human beings to do injustice to one another to test us. All those people who starve is not because God has limited His sustenance, it's because of the injustice. Because there are dominant powerful people denying them their sustenance. Let me give you a, just a quick example. Let's say you are supposed to receive your morning newspaper every day, just a small example here. It's delivered to you, it's de delivered to your mailbox actually. At 6 a.m. you open your door to read the paper at 7 a.m. At 6.30 every day somebody comes and he takes it away from you. He steals the paper from you. Is it the mailman's fault? Is it the company's fault that you subscribe to? Let's say you subs you've subscribed for the New York Times, it gets delivered every day. Did the New York Times do an act of injustice to you because you're not getting your paper? No. Is the mailman somehow responsible? No. Then why did you not receive your paper? Act of injustice. There is an evil intention, an evil player in the, in the game, in the picture, who denied you that right. And we have hadiths from the Ahlul Bayt that anytime a person goes hungry, it's because their right has been denied. Not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give them enough sustenance. The resources God has given to us on earth is more than sufficient. But then you've got people who are greedy and they are unjust, they oppress one another. That's where the problem is. Now yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have stopped them and everyone from doing injustice, but remember we're here for a test. Allah's testing us. The oppressor, he's tested on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seek revenge from the oppressor. And the oppressed, Allah will compensate them. If they remain patient and they accept the will of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment will reward them with the highest levels of paradise. So there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed for this disparity in income and wealth. If everyone was rich and they had the same level of wealth, you think we'd have a functional society? Who would do some jobs that no one is willing to do if everyone had an equal amount of wealth? We couldn't live properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, part of His system, He's made us in need to one another. Because once you're in need, you have now a relationship with people. Now, there is a lot of room for you to commit acts of injustice. Allah is watching you. Allah is testing you. And that's why we have many narrations that tell us those rich people whom Allah has given them a lot of wealth, Allah tells them in many narrations and verses of the Quran that you are responsible for the poor. I've appointed you to be my representatives when it comes to the poor. Because Allah has numerous ways of delivering sustenance to you. Rumors sometimes Allah sends down the rain and the crops grow, that's your sustenance. Allah gives you health, you go and work, that's sustenance. Allah sometimes combines numerous factors, you become lucky as they say, and you make money. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the money to a wealthy person. And the poor person, their money is with that wealthy person. They're like the mailman who's supposed to deliver the paper. What happens is sometimes that mailman doesn't deliver it. Allah has numerous ways of sending wealth and rizq to people. Wealthy people, they think they own their money. They don't own their money. If Allah gave you wealth, a lot of them, that money is, does, is, does not even belong to you. It's an amana, it's a trust that God gave in your hands and He has directly asked you, deliver it to the people. Many people don't. Many people don't. And that's a great act of injustice. You know how great of an act of injustice when we don't pay our religious dues to the, to the poor? Let's say I want to give you a gift. 
I come here, you have, see, I, there is no obligation on me. I'm giving you a gift. I give you a thousand dollars. Here's a gift. Now, in addition to this thousand dollars, I tell you, and I have a request from you. There's two hundred dollars. Please give it to so and so person. Can you? You take the one thousand dollars, it's halal, completely yours, and it's a favor that I've done for you. My only request was, take this 200 and give it to that person. If this person takes the gift of $1,000, and they also take the 200, how do you view such person? How do you view such a person? Greed. It's not only greed. He's a thief. And, and, and it's the worst type of thief, right? Because you're gifting that thief. See, an average anonymous thief whom you don't know, okay fine, they don't know, they break into your house, they take something. But sometimes your friend, you're good to them, you give them $1,000 and you tell them, just deliver this and they steal it. That theft is greater. Because now you've done a favor on this person. It's so much more wrong for them to steal from you. So much more wrong than somebody who doesn't even know you. Right? Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you feel betrayed? Of course you would feel betrayed. You're like, I was good to you. I actually entrusted you. Let's look at the world today. Anyone who denies the poor from their rightful dues, from their religious dues, is like this person. Allah has given them life, sustenance, everything. Allah says, with, with the zakat, for example, those people who zakat applies to, Allah says, I just want 2.5%. I've given you 97.5%. 2.5, give it to the poor. They deny it. Or when it comes to the khums, which is applicable, Allah says 80% is yours. $800 is for you. 200, give it to those who, who need it. We deny him that. Imagine this act of betrayal. It's a big, big act of betrayal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His system allows for this to test us on the Day of Judgment, He'll tell us, I tested you, I gave you free will, and this is how you acted. It's part of that test. And whenever we take a test, for example, a multiple choice test, you've all taken it, right? There's a question, answers to choose from. From those answers, you've got usually four or five options, right? Out of those options, how many, how many is right? Just one. What about the rest? Wrong. They're wrong. Who put those wrong answers? Who put them in the test? Those wrong answers. Teacher, why? I thought the teacher is supposed to teach you truth and facts. Why did they put wrong stuff in your test? Why? Test you. And usually you see the wrong answers, they're more than the right answer. There's just one right answer and all that wrong. But that's how a test works. If it was the opposite, that wouldn't be a real test. You've got five answers, four are right, just one is wrong. People are like, okay, come on, you know, that's not a real test. Give me a real test, right? That's why in the world there's only one Sirat al mustaqim It's that one right answer. But the paths that take you to evil, they can be many, but there's only one right path. See, when it comes to just a simple multiple choice uh, test, we understand that. Well, take that same concept and apply it to religion and faith and what's right. So the Imam السلام, in this hadith is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is delivering the sustenance to us and dividing it and apportioning it, Allah is just. Don't think that if there's some injustice here and there, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is denying you your right. No. People are coming acts of injustice and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you. It goes back to that idea of the test.